Hey friends, it's me Micah. This is the Homestead Bandwagon. Uh, today I'm going to be attaching a post hole digger, this thing right here, to a tractor. This, this blue thing right here. Um, so we're just going to get right into it. Um, I'm going to show you the easy way to do it and also if you're in a tight spot, give you a couple ideas here. And also good ways to take off your PTO post hole digger and store it so you're not making a mess for future use. So let's get in it. Okay, so this again is a tractor post hole digger. Um, it's got parts on it. Let's talk about what the parts are. So this is the auger. This is the, the business end of the post hole digger that digs into the ground. It connects to a gearbox uh, with some bolts. You can kind of see the bolt head there. Uh, those are shear pin bolts. So they're supposed to break if this thing comes into contact with something that's immovable. So instead of your whole gearbox getting fried or all the power from the gearbox going down the PTO shaft to the back of your tractor and messing up your tractor, these bolts, there's two bolts in here that hold this auger on are supposed to break. So we want to make sure we're putting soft bolts in here, grade two usually. Some people do grade five, don't do grade eight. Um, this gearbox, you fill it on top. There's a little check hole here. When this thing's sitting up straight, you could open this, start putting this wants uh, 80, 90 gear oil in it, put gear oil in it. Once it starts weeping out of this hole, we've got enough fluid in there. Close that, close that, you're good to go. And this does vent. Most of them should vent. So if there's too much pressure going in here, little, little hydraulic fluid will come out the top. So if this thing's laying on its side or something, that'll vent out. That again is your PTO shaft, hooks up to the PTO on the tractor, because this is a PTO powered piece of equipment. Um, so this is your top link. So this whole long feller here attaches here to your tractor. And a lot of times I'll have people buy these who have troubles because they're trying to attach this top link here to this top link here. And, and that's not what you do. So you're gonna take this top link out um, Put it somewhere safe where you don't lose it obviously and the pto top link itself will hook into your top link and we'll get into that and then this hoop here is your lower links so these links hook onto these lower links now i cheated a little bit i have a pat's quick hitch on here which turns my lower links into hooks so you might just have some balls with holes in them that you gotta wrangle with but either way it's workable. That's just an easier way to do things in your life. And uh, you'll notice that this lower link can attach through a couple holes here. You gotta experiment with that. So that'll change kind of your geometry when you're raising and lowering. Um, I've got this set so when I've raised it at the highest height that it'll go, this PTO shaft doesn't wang into anything, but it also will go up high. If you have it in the wrong hole, it won't lift all the way or it'll lift too high and the PTO shaft will get bound up. We won't get too deep in the weeds. You're just gonna have to experiment with that. A couple optional things on this one. This bar here, the idea here is that you can use this bar to affect the angle of the shaft. I'm not in love with these because if something gets bound up, this is something that could whack you. You should set your angle by backing your tractor up and lowering your uh, auger into the ground at the appropriate angle instead of trying to manhandle it, but whatever, there is a use for it and I'll show you. Um, and then these red guys, these are kickstands for holding this thing up when it's being stored. You take those off when it's being used. If, if you don't have kickstands on your post hole digger, um, I'll show you a way to take this off so it's easier to store. Otherwise it'll be laying on the ground and it's real difficult to wrangle these things anyway. And when they're on the ground, you're wrestling with them more. So if you don't have these, these really nice kickstands, um, show you some other stuff to do. So yeah, we're gonna back the tractor up here and get into step one of attaching this thing. Just as a quick aside here, I know there's a lot of asides, make sure your sway chains, that's the thing that keep your lower three point arms in place, keep them from flopping around. You can, you know, disconnect these or unlock these or loosen them up to, to slide your, uh, your lower three point arms onto the, uh, the uh, lower three point connection 
for the post hole digger. But man, make sure you lock these things in or tighten them up. A little movement ain't too bad, but if they're swanging all over the place while you're trying to dig holes, that could just be a bad time. So, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's get back on this. Okay, we are backed up to this post hole digger. The tractor's off, e-brake is on. Hey, baby. Got a dog helping me. Are you helping? Okay, you can help as much as you want. So, the fact of the matter is with stuff like post hole diggers is you got to be lifting them by hand. If you can have a, somebody helping you with these things, it goes a long ways, but you know, usually that's not a choice. We're going to start by getting our lower links um, on the, uh, the post hole digger attached to the lower links of the tractor. Again, I have these Pat's quick hitches on here. These make life pretty easy. Um, you cannot use a post hole digger with a standard style quick hitch. That's why I like the Pat's kit. Um, it allows us to use stuff like post hole diggers. <laughs> so this thing might want to whack you in the head, this uh, adjuster rod, so just watch that. We're going to start by attaching our lower links. Um, this I'm going to be able to just lift and drop into these hooks. It's pretty easy. Um, if you just have the ball ends on your tractor, you're going to have to lift it, slide one ball at a time over your lower link pins. So something to think about. All right, so we have to remove the tractor's top link to attach the, uh, the auger. So we're gonna pull this cotter pin out, pull out our top link, and we're gonna go put the top link somewhere safe. So I'm gonna hold on to this pin that attached the top link to the tractor. Um, you can use a category one top link pin to replace this if you want. It's just the pin's already here, why not use it? Um, there's three holes here to attach to on this tractor. Whatever, just, Pick one, experiment, see what works. So we're gonna throw this in our, our pocket and see if we can get this uh, top link attached. Okay, so this top link doesn't really wanna move. We gotta raise our lower links and then attach our top link up here. So let's uh, go start up the tractor and do that. Now this, do, this tractor does have a couple tricks up his sleeve. One of them is that I can raise my lower links from the back of the tractor. If you can't, you gotta just eyeball it from the operator seat. So it always seems to be the most confounding thing about hooking implements to tractors is hooking the PTO shaft up. Um, there's different styles of PTO shafts, we won't go into it. Some have buttons that you have to hook or push to lock this to the PTO on the back of your tractor. Some like this one have a sleeve. You pull this little button or sleeve back and slide it on. So sometimes it's kind of hard to squeeze and push. It's kind of easy to take off, you squeeze and pull off, but putting it on kind of stinks. But you can get different PTO shafts if you're made of money. In this case, we're not. Anyways, getting this shaft onto the tractor, if you don't have a good angle, can sometimes be kind of a pain in the neck. That's where this uh, bar up here could come in handy. We could lift the lower three-point arms of this tractor, get the unit off the ground, get the auger off the ground, and then we could pull this down to get that auger sticking out in a way so we can get this unit straight in line for hooking up our PTO shaft. Um, probably won't need to do it in this case um, and it's kind of easier to have the unit up and away from your head while you're working under this hoop but you know do what you got to do. Um, if you don't have one of these adjuster shafts maybe a long stick would help and another just real quick point here for safety. Safety first right? Um, I've got the tractor off while I'm doing this. I don't like hooking up implements to my PTO with the tractor turned on, but my arms are also up in the air right now. 
in theory, you know, your cousin Eddie could come over and lean on your tractor and drop this whole thing on your head while you're using it. Um, they would tell you to put blocks under these, which isn't completely reasonable. Another thing you can do, I'll show you real quick up here. Okay, coming up to the tractor right here under the seat, got this knob. So this knob, if you turn it to the left, speeds up how fast your three-point drops. And if you turn it to the right, it slows it down. It's, you see here, there's a lock. If I turn this all the way to the right, the, the idea is this locks your three-point so it won't drop even if you push your lever down all the way. So if I accidentally throw this lever down, my three-point arms are supposed to stay up. Crummy things happen and that's how people die, so it might not work, but at the very least, lock that thing in, give yourself a little small chance of not getting crushed by an implement while you're working under it. Um, again, you should block the stuff up, but whatever. So, okay, let's, let's hook this PTO shaft up. Now, something to know here, <laughs> I know I said we were gonna hook the shaft up, is sometimes the threads on this don't match up with these threads. And uh, a lot of tractors, you know, if you try to turn this by hand, it's not going to turn. So your other option is to take your shaft and turn it. Now, thankfully, this PTO digger's sitting in such a, a, a way that as I spin this, you know, all the force goes to the gearbox and the gearbox spins the auger. It's because this thing's sitting on these handy little stands here that are picking it up off the ground just a tiny bit. If we didn't have those and that auger's jabbed into the ground, it's gonna be really difficult to spin this thing to get your PTO shaft lined up. So if that's the case, you might have to get creative. You might have to lay this whole thing on the ground so that PTO shaft can spin. I don't know, just things to think about. Um, some tractors though, like this one, we could We can go around to the operator station. This yellow handle here lets me turn off the PTO. This releases the brake on the PTO. So now I can spin the tractor's PTO shaft freely. And now we can line up the tractor's PTO to the PTO shaft on the post hole digger in theory and you'll kind of feel it click it won't let you lock it but you'll kind of feel it click in Now I've been struggling getting this PTO shaft to hook to the tractor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this unit laying down on the ground so the shaft is in a straight line. It's way easier to hook the shaft in a straight line to the PTO on the tractor than at an angle. So we're gonna lift this thing up and flatten it out a little bit. I gotta unlock the uh, the height adjustment on this PTO or the three point arms. Thank you. 
All right, let's try it again here. Telling you, these shafts where you gotta squeeze them to put them on while you're shoving them really stink. But that's locked on. We're good to go. Let's get this thing in the air and make it spin real quick. Okay, so that's digging digging holes pretty good. This is a, a six inch auger. Um, they dig holes okay. Um, if if it was me, I just I'd get a nine. It's just the way to go. But this came with the postal digger. I bought it used from a gal. But you know, if you're doing four by four posts, it's a lot easier to do it with a nine inch auger from from what I understand. I'm not some post hole digging professional or whatever, but these six inch holes cave in pretty fast. It takes a lot of time. And uh, another big thing to just consider is uh, don't run this thing at 540, run it lower. Because if you hit a root or a rock or something, you're just gonna be blowing shear pins, causing havoc. R run your RPMs a little lower. Okay, so um, what if we don't have these fancy dancy kickstands to hold this thing up? What do we do? Well, we use this thing like a post hole digger. We're gonna make a hole like this and plant it in the hole. So I'll put it in the hole here and uh, disconnect the whole whole, sh whole sh thing. And uh, you can see uh, how that works. This top link a lot of times will come colliding down when you take your pin out, so just be ready for that. But keep your lower links on because your lower links are what are keeping you from getting massacred, really. So there you have it, it's disconnected. It's not perfect, it's leaning. You could I could have dug this farther into the ground, <clears throat> but it's out and it's basically freestanding. As soon as I drive away from this thing, it's gonna kinda thump down onto the ground. So it probably would've been better if I would've dug it into the ground a little further, but you know, whatever.
Well, that didn't work too good. Probably should have dug this into a fresh hole and dug it in a little deeper, but it's fine. Just having this thing steady on this back end really makes it really makes a difference for being able to wrangle this thing around. So there we go. Post hole digger install. The way you use it's by making it spin and going into the ground. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see ya.